Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I, my name is Lionel Voy. I'm pre sales solution consultant working with uh, Heinz together. I'm located in Switzerland. I want to introduce you to the integration for Polar and the MATLAB Simulink today. Uh, first of all, uh, the, I will speak or show you also the connector in some minutes, uh, which is uh, named Polar and Connector for Simulink version 3.2.0, which is the latest um, integration we released uh, two months ago in April. Uh, just remember, uh, I put the link there, but uh, this extension is available for free on our uh, Polarin extension portal. Yeah. You see some extract from the extension portal. And there, if you go on this uh, on the link there, you will also see some uh, movies that are posted on, on YouTube that show the feature of the integration. Yeah. And just before the question came, just you see that uh, our integration is compatible with MATLAB Simulink 2021B and above. And now the latest version was tested with uh, 2022B and 2023A, the pre-release version. I think now the which, uh, MATLAB released two or three weeks ago, the 2023A, which will be retested on our site. Then some words about the, the integration and um, what we will bring, the, the values that bring this integration um, to you as a the plugin customer. Uh, first of all, I will give you a brief overview about uh, the basic functionality. But what you, what you see on the right hand side is the MATLAB C-Link application. And uh, Polarin is really directly there on the right hand side embedded inside MATLAB C-Link. Yeah? I mean, you don't need to leave or to go outside MATLAB C-Link. Yeah, you really work completely inside MATLAB Simulink to do your job. And there, uh, I will go some, through some uh, feature there. Yeah, you can, first of all, for example, uh, select the context, that means the project, the Polaron project, and then you can import some uh, live document directly and extract the requirements and consume those requirements later on directly inside your Simulink model. And um, we have also other functionality, I will cover that uh, in some minutes. And we try to, with this kind of, of feature there, to really simplify the user experience yeah, and the user interface, UI and UX, to bring you only what you really need from MATLAB seeing to, to go to the Polar world, yeah, as easy as possible. And then also you will see that in, in some minutes that uh, by creating some uh, links between the requirement structure, which happens there, there, that means every line is a requirement, which is coming from the live document. Uh, we are able to link it with a block or a model of Simulink. And then, of course, when we synchronize bugs, that means when we update the links, it will recreate the, the Simulink object directly also inside Polaron and will link them to the right with the right requirements. Yeah. And by, this, by doing that, we'll have the full traceability and coverage um, directly uh, for both worlds and also uh, reportable directly from the Polaron side. Yeah. And by doing that, of course, because we really uh, work together with MATLAB Sync and Polarion, we really improve the, the collaboration eh, by doing that. Let me go into the system directly. I mean, I'm directly inside MATLAB Sync. I have a project open, which is uh, uh, an extract from a battery management system, which is a state of charge part of battery management system. And like you see on the right hand side, I'm directly see as an embedded view uh, my Polarion project. Okay. And then uh, you can um, go and work directly inside this embedded Polar there. Yeah, for example, I can um, see the home folder and so on. And now um, I can directly open the, the MATLAB sync requirement view. Yeah, it's directly a function that we embed there to open the, the so-called uh, requirements view of MATLAB Simlink. And what we see there is we see the structure of sorry, of my live document there. This is a live document that I push from Polarion to MATLAB Simlink. We see the, the import version, and then we see all the chapter, sub-chapter, and all the work item. Yeah. I mean, we see the complete structure of any requirement. They're important. I will show you that later on how to import another requirement. This is the first uh, view we have. <clears throat> and then uh, if I go to my model, I can ask, MATLAB Sync to show me all the models, the part of the models that are already linked to 
Polarion, and we see that all the yellow highlighted models are really linked to any requirements that is in Polarion. Let me focus on this view, for example. I see there there is a requirements linked to it. If I click there, I can make it visible, and I see the requirements. First of all, I see the number of the requirements and the title, and I see also directly the description of my requirements, which is coming directly from uh, Polarion. Yeah? And by selecting my requirements, which is linked with my model there, it's also directly selected in my live document structure, directly inside, Polar, inside the MATLAB Simlink. And if I pick this element, I can directly say that I want to see also this specific, by the way, I can also hide, a, it's a standard feature, I can hide the sidebar there. And I see directly, you recall the context of my live document and, and get exactly my work item, yeah? the one which is selected there. That means we have a, a, tress, a traces and link between these requirements, these objects, which is then linked to these specific requirements. And we see the linked work item also, that we see there is one element which is implemented by CC counting. That means this is an important part of the simulating block because both elements are linked, which is automatically generated when we transfer, when we update the links back from MATLAB Sync to Polarn. Those kind of objects will be automatically created. And if you see the name there, CC counting, it's exactly like this name. Yeah? And then it will exactly extract uh, on this side, if I click on this element, for example, I see that we see the part of the model there, which is exactly the one which is under my simulink object. Yeah, that means we extract directly, we create the simulink block element, yeah, which is linked to the requirements directly inside Polarin, and we extract the model directly inside the description view, and also add the MATLAB property, the, the property table, with the name and the values that are defined on the MATLAB link. Yeah. That means that coming automatically directly from the uh, integration, the connector. And what we also have there, if I'm going down to my project there, there is also uh, the, the connector had an hyperlink to the model. And if I click on this hyperlink, it will highlight me now this element, yeah, which is exactly the CC counting block. That means there is also an interaction between this hyperlink and the model I have in front uh, of me. Yeah. That means you can really close the loop and have all the traces between the simulating block and the requirements there. Okay. Then just wanted to show you, you see also there the what we call the the, cover, the, the, the link between uh, my requirements from Polarion and the model. That means you see the, the the ones that are blue is fully linked. That means we have one requirement which is linked to one model. Yeah? If I select it, I see it's highlighted in violet there. And I can see that it's linked to multiple elements. Yeah? It's also possible. It's an end to end relation possibility. Yeah? But now I really want to focus on the ones that are white, that means not linked at all. Yeah? And there, I, I don't know what, what really this requirement is. And by selecting that, I can open the, the right requirements and see what is really the, the description of this requirements. And then I can start just by want to link this requirements, specific requirements to an object of my model. I can just with drag and drop link any requirements with one element of my model. Yeah. And now you see that this element is now implemented. That means it is at least linked once. Yeah. And if I'm, if I'm done, I can update backlinks. That means it will recreate the structure, the needed structure on the polar side, and also uh, will create the, the object and link all objects together. In there, if I open the once again the object, I see that it's linked now with also the CC counting element yeah, directly. It's a way to, to link new elements. And then I can really go st step by step and uh, link all the needed requirements with a part of my model. And there, what I also, also created some small reports. I mean, there we have some uh, statistics, for example, for traceability. That means there we see, for example, especially if, and explicitly for this specific live document, state of charge requirement specification, I see how many elements 
are linked to Simulink, 12 are linked, and three are not linked to Simulink. Yeah? I see that also from a graphical point of view. I see also that we have 17, eh, 12 plus 5, and we see there the, the link element, and we see there the status of every work item that are inside my document. 11 are still in draft, and 6 are reviewed yeah, from a status point of view. And there we have uh, all the linked to Simulink element. Yeah? That means I really show them directly. And uh, by clicking there, I, I can also directly see this uh, BMS 616. I see the status review, and I see there on the right hand side uh, some specific field I want to see from Polaran. That means the status review, the severity, we see the description, and we see the, the link element, for example, that is linked with this specific uh, Simulink block yeah, from 10. I can really consume my my uh, document. My, I can view really from the Polaran point of view. Yeah, of course, you can imagine that you can also see that only on the Polaran with a web browser, not inside uh, Simulink. And I can really be focused exactly on this live document and see where we are with this document. I mean, we have still five elements that are not linked to Simulink, yeah, but it's really a report for people that perhaps don't uh, use uh, MATLAB Simulink at all. They can see where, where we are uh, on this uh, trustworthy and relation. Another report which I created there, it's the, the coverage, links and coverage, where I can s select a software feature, in our case, once again, SOC, set of charge, uh, software feature, which is a property of my work item. And I see in another form also um, the work item linked element, the software requirements that are linked, how many simulating block we have, and I see the, the coverage report there, 70.6%, for example, and five that are not linked. It's just another overview to see and to, to show you also the capabilities we have uh, with Polaron on the reporting side. And there you see on the left-hand side the Polaron recurrence with, in this case, the, the description of the Simulink element with the table. Yeah? And on the right-hand side, in the same way that I seen be, I show you before, we have the, the link to the model element inside MATLAB. That means if I uh, deselect everything, I just want to remove this highlighting there. Nothing is highlighted there. And if I click there, it will highlight my model there. If I go down, I can select another model. For example, if I want to see with which MATLAB model is this key on a uh, simulating block, I can click on that and it show me this element of the model. Okay. And I would just want to, to show you, uh, for example, I'm working on a project. I have some new requirements from, uh, uh, from Polaran. They want to import this requirements, for example. Uh, this live document contains only two, two requirements. Yeah? And now I want to import them to Simulink. And now, if we have a look there, now we have two elements, you can expand that. And I see that those two elements were imported inside uh, MATLAB seeing from Polaran, from a live document of Polaran. It's so easy as that. And then I can start uh, linking my new requirements with my model. And then can uh, update my links really recreate all the linkage and the, the needed work items uh, inside Polaran. And if I change the, the table there, we'll see the link work item, we'll see the new elements there. We see now the new created simulating block, which is go to 11, which uh, go to 8, sorry, which is uh, this element there. Huh? Which is called go to eight. I mean, really re recreate live in the system the, the linkage. Yeah. Okay. And let me go to uh, the next uh, topic. The next topic is uh, first of all to, to, to work with one version of uh, live doc and requirements. It's, it's easy, but the first challenge is coming when change happens. Yeah. How did you track that somebody changed the requirements you are working on? Are the requirements still valid with your model? Are they still in sync or not? Yeah. Therefore, we have a capability uh, there directly inside uh, this integration to see all the changes. 
and just wanted to show you uh, if, for example, I modify some to show you the way it's working, I can modify my work by um, my recurrence, and there I can just refresh everything and it will just resync everything. And now what's happened there in my document, I see one line is re is red because there are there are some changes. Yeah. I mean this uh, recurrence is, was changed from the last time. And then I can have a look there. It show me the element, yeah. And I can see directly the polar and history. That means the changes that happened on these objects, and it, it call exactly the history of my object. And I see that Lionel did the modification one minute ago and add new changes, for example. And then you can imagine that you you need to to check if if the change of the requirements have have, have an impact to the model or not. And then according to that do the changes, the appropriate changes. Yeah. And if you are fine with that, you can uh, directly um, open the, the changes there from the, the links uh, element. I can clear the issue. That means say, okay, the issue is now solved. And I can resync and I will tell the system I'm fine. The the issue is fully the the changes is uh, fully under control, and I'm fine with these changes. And then you can uh, really um, go through all the changes and uh, make either the change of the model, or just tell the system that everything is fine and we can go forward with the new changes. It's really do to keep track of changes. Yeah. And the last point I want to show you. Is uh, one part of it is a new feature which is uh, coming in the new connector version 3.2.1.0, sorry, and also with Polaron 23.2304, which is just released uh, three weeks ago. Uh, we announced the support to, to Simlink Test Manager, which is called STM yeah, on the Simlink side. That means um, we are not only focused on requirements management, like uh, till now, in the previous version. But we really go uh, forward and bring the the test part of Simulink, I mean the the test and test management, also together with uh, Polaren. That means there we have um, several uh, possibilities there. On one side, we we can import the Polaren test case yeah, directly into um, the STM Simulink test manager, and there we import the test case. And if you really want to uh, use them inside Simulink Test Manager. We can uh, consume them and then create directly the test and run the test directly, either from the our user interface or directly inside Test uh, Test Manager. And then it will recreate because we don't want to to modify uh, the test case from Polaren, but we want to extend them. Yeah, add some parameters perhaps on the Simulink side, and add other uh, information that are only managed on a Simulink side. Yeah, that means we can enrich them, and then if needed, uh, it's a configuration. Then you can also synchronize with Polaren back, and he will create his own uh, work item type and link, uh, which, which is a symlink uh, object, which is linked to the Polaren test case. Yeah? That means we we expand them, or refine them directly from symlink manager to Polaren. And then I, I told you you can execute the test case directly from. The, the user interface there, also see the test run directly from there and the status. And then we can also publish the results uh, from Simulink Test Manager to Polaren and see the results there. And like we have uh, the functionality on the Polaren side, that is also uh, configurable. If a test case failed, then we are able to automatically create uh, a defect which is linked to the, the test case which failed. Yeah. It's a possibility. It's also supported. And the last feature um, is that we can also import test cases from um, MATLAB Simulink uh, directly, uh, import models into MATLAB Simulink and then import them to Polarin. Just wanted to show you briefly the, the feature. That means if I'm going to the test manager side, I see the Simulink test manager. 
Once again, I imported my uh, test case document, live doc, directly inside Simulink Test Manager, like we've seen before. I see that we have four tests. Yeah. I see that, for example, the link from the test case to the requirements, both requirements. I see the which system is under test. I can override some parameters. That means the standard features of um, MATLAB Simulink. And I see also the description which is coming directly from um, from Polaren. And then I can, for example, run this this test directly on the Polaren side. Tested everything. We see that we have an issue. System will tell me that we are entering the test case. We have some technical issue. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And now I want to show you that, uh, first of all, I can open the test run, which was just created there. So this one. But we see some the, the test run are linked. And we see that some failed, for example. We see the failed test case with the defect created. And we see the, the context there with all the, the MATLAB properties. And I can also uh, directly execute the test case from there, all the test cases, yeah, instead of uh, execute them on a simulating test manager side. And I can also publish the test case results to Polaren if I want really to push the results directly in Polaren. And if I'm going there, just want to show you, okay, you publish the test results, the test that just happened now, eh? one failed because I just sent one test case to test and three are still waiting. And then I can also just wanted to show you the last part that this specific object work item, which is created from the Simulink test manager as a Simulink uh, test work item, is linked link to any software test case from Polar. That means we extract this one, which were imported inside Simulink when we uh, we create a new a new one, which is really hundred hundred percent. Uh, controlled by Simulink, and both are linked for the traceability point of view. And we see also the the defect was that was created because the test failed. And then we see on this side now the verified status. We see that we have some that are executed, some are unexecuted, uh, but we really see also the status of the test executed uh, directly linked to this specific uh, document and the structure.